All right, Buenos Dias, mis amigos. All right, so I got a, a request here from Gabriel Syt. Uh, this person says, "Could you please do a video where you share where we are right now in respect to what the Bible says and what you understand it to be? There is so much deception in the world." That it's hard to believe Satan is not currently running the place. The evildoers that run the world are doing all that they want at the expense of and control of the masses. Right. So let's uh, walk through this. All right. Because it really is very simple. And the Bible is very. Um, it's an amazing book it really is because it can make the the lowest IQ of us among us the dumbest among us it can make the dumbest of us wise all right so for example in Psalm 19 the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple all right so the key the the secret if you will the mystery is that to understand the Word of God we must have faith See, faith is the key to understanding the Bible. All right. Once you have faith, then your eyes are opened so that you may be able to see all that is written in it. Let's find a verse to support that. Let's find a verse to support that. All right. So in Isaiah 6, verse 10, Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. And again in the New Testament, Matthew 13, for this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Alright, so, this is all about faith. Once you have faith, then your eyes are opened don't matter what your IQ is you can be dumber than a doorknob you could be just as dumb as me and still have understanding of the Word of God 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 verse 15 even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away so the key is faith it's always been about faith it's not about going to Bible college it's not about having a high IQ it's not about having access to manuscripts from all around the world it's all about believing the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God all right, and of course, if you have a King James Bible, that Bible is directly from God. It's not from man. In Second Peter chapter 1, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So let me ask you this. You believe God can resurrect you from the dead but God can't give you his word in your language 
you know what kind of what kind of god is that think about this second in, in Acts chapter 2 excuse me Acts chapter 2 and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born see there are prophecies about this there are prophecies teachings about everything in the Bible it's amazing and Isaiah 28 for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people first Corinthians 14 in the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people and yet for all that will they not hear me saith the Lord alright so the Word of God transcends all languages for all time forever and ever okay that's important to know all right because the key is faith all right it's always been about faith I want to make that very clear you don't have to have an IQ you don't have to have a degree all you have to do is have faith alright the Word of God transcends all languages for all time forever and ever okay and this is all throughout the Bible okay first Peter chapter 1 but the Word of the Lord endures forever alright so let's go and try to understand the timeline where we are all right and so I, I bring that up because without faith you're not going to be able to see it regardless if I regardless of what and no matter what I say it won't matter without faith all right so let's go to Matthew 24 Mark 13 and Luke 21 this is very important because who understands the end time eschatology better than our Lord Jesus Christ and our Lord was asked this very question what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world nobody is gonna explain it better than our Lord Jesus Christ alright so in Ma in Matthew 24 Jesus the very first thing he says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many and that's uh, that's to your point here there's so much deception in the world that it's hard to believe Satan is not currently running the place okay so for sure um, there is great deception in the world okay no question about it and Satan is the absence of the Spirit of God alright now when Jesus talks about wars and rumors of wars nation rising against nation this is not the sign of the end time this is just the beginning of sorrows alright we see this in Matthew Mark right the beginning of sorrows Matthew 21 you shall hear wars and commotions be not terrified for these things must first come to pass but the end is not by and by well Jesus is asked about the end of the world and he's saying that the wars commotions rumors of wars this is not the end Jesus is asked what is the end and he's saying this is not the end all right and he's telling us these things that'll happen all right but don't worry you, it's okay you're gonna be fine all right now 
to me this right here verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come now we live in a world in my very strong opinion where the gospel is preached in every nation right everybody in the world has access to the word of god and to the gospel of our lord jesus christ all right, that's not the problem. The problem is the love of many have waxed cold, and de de the deceivers are outnumbering the rest of the world. All right, so the deception is what is uh, causing all the wickedness in the world. Okay. It's because of the deception that we are going to a place, progressing to a place where if God allowed things to continue, there would no flesh be saved. Alright, and there's a great question asked here in Luke 17 or 18, I forget now, let's see. Luke 18 there's a great question being asked here I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man comes shall he find faith on the earth and except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened we can use the days of Noah as an example out of all the people that were on earth only eight were saved all right, in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, there wasn't even ten righteous. And so also, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, will he find faith on the earth? Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. And why is this happening? It's not because of the wars. It is because of the deceivers. There's so much deception out there that it's, 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 it takes a miracle, really, for a child to be saved in today's world. And that's what we're seeing. That's exactly what you're seeing, and you're recognizing that there's great deception in the world today. All right, so all these things that Jesus is talking about, these are happening all right. The Great Tribulation is not because of what Dan Rather and Peter Jennings reports on the television. The Great Tribulation that we are enduring now is the deception that is all around us. We are surrounded by the deceivers. Everywhere, everywhere, in everything. It, from the schools to the newspapers to the movies that we watch is full of deception lies and it's hard to find the truth it really is especially for young people more so now than ever before all right so you ask about where are we in the timeline well there's nothing that has to be done before the Lord Jesus comes all right nothing he could come today there's nothing hindering our Lord Jesus Christ from coming today and when he comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world all right now that's important to establish that fact so when we go to uh, the book of Revelation for example all right I'm gonna point this out here for you here in Revelation 6 we read about the sixth seal being open you've heard people talk about the seven seals all right and we read one two and three and four and five and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the soul, I'm sorry, I saw under the altar 
the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So right here, we ought to be able to see very clearly, very simply, that this has the fifth seal. Is That means the end of the world has not yet come, because the they are crying out, saying, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge? The judgment of God has not come. And the judgment of God comes when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right. And white robes are given unto them, given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Uh, so just hold, you know, that's where we're at right now, okay? If you, in regards to Revelation chapter 6 and the seven seals. And then also in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. We are right here. The next thing to come is Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. And... Let me real quickly. Let me go to um, let me go to Matthew 12. And he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Okay. So if you're looking for a sign. then that's not good okay the only sign that we really need to be looking for is the sign in the sun and the moon and stars in the heavens right that's the only sign that we're waiting to see those of us that are born of God right so if you're not born of the Spirit of God I highly recommend yeah, just first of all, you know, read the book of John. That would be my first recommendation. But then if you want to understand what the sign of Jonas is, read the book of Jonah. It's like, what, five, six chapters? I forget now. All right, what is the sign of Jonah? Four chapters. Boy, I'm way off. See, I need to read it too. Yeah, I'll do that today. it take take 20 minutes to read that, Okay. But the only sign that we're looking for as a child of God is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud of in, the, in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. Okay. So this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Right, and he comes when we see the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. All right, so again, in Revelation 6, regarding the seven seals, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sath cloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bomb and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face that, of him that sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand it? So this is Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, 
that what we just read is from one perspective it's from the perspective of the unsaved all these people that are not saved they're gonna hide in the mountains and under the rocks and and say fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne there's gonna be absolutely no doubt what is happening there's gonna be no doubt that it's the end of the world okay all the tribes of the earth shall mourn in Luke 21 it even says that men's hearts will be failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken fall on us hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb this is a very terrifying moment for all them that are not saved but for us when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven then he will send his angels and they shall gather together his elect alright so we're lifted up in the air alright we're lifted up in the air our enemy is gathered at our feet on the day of his wrath and this goes back to Genesis 3 verse 15 I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel see God is gonna stomp his foot on the head of the serpent destroying death forever right just like what we read about in first first Corinthians chapter 15 then shall be brought the pass then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory all right so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven is it is the end of the world and it is the wrath of God it is the great day of the Lord it is the end of the world and at the end of the world all evil all wickedness all iniquity is destroyed forever all right so your question of where are we in the timeline we are definitely in the fifth seal of the seven seals and in Matthew 24 mark 13 21 the only thing that we have to look forward to is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's really that simple now I get it a whole lot of people out there a whole lot of false teachers out there are preaching a phony phony baloney thousand year period that comes after the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and it adds so much confusion to so many people that are still looking for answers you're looking for answers so who are you gonna trust are you gonna trust what the Bible says or are you gonna trust what other men say because other men are lying by your own admission there is so much deception in the world Jesus is asked specifically about the end of the world and he says take heed that no man deceive you you know that the world is full of deceptions deceivers liars it's all around us so what are you gonna believe the Word of God it's very simple right here you don't need a high IQ to understand this stuff very easy very simple to to, to know and, and to understand Revelation 20 it's unbelievable to me it's incredible so many people falsely teach this to fit the Hollywood movie left behind in that movie people just disappear and just like you're just cruising cruising and boozing or whatever then all of a sudden people are have disappeared and you're like what's going on well I don't know George where'd everybody go that's not gonna be it at all man that's not gonna be it at all all of the tribes of the earth are gonna mourn men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth and 
uh, the kings of the earth, great men, rich men, chief captains, mighty men, every bondman, every free man, will hide themselves, and they will say, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne. There's going to be great fear. There's going to be panic. There's going to be distress. It's going to be horrible for them that are not born of God. All right. There's not going to be any mistake about it. When it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. All right. In Revelation 20, the thousand years, at the end of the thousand years, it's the end of the world. In Genesis 3, verse 15, the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the end of the world when Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all evil, all wickedness forever. All right. There shouldn't be any doubt about it, but you know, again, it's so hard. It's so hard because there are so many de deceivers and liars out there. And it really becomes a question of, do you believe the Word of God? Or do you believe what other men say? It's really, it really comes down to that. Alright, and of course, um, you know, there are so many people out there saying, well, this here, the Greek says this, and the and the Hebrew means that, and and the Chinese has this, and the whatever you know. Look, if you're pointing to another language, that says automatically that you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, and that's the problem with the world today. People don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. Why? You believe God can raise you from the dead, but he can't give you a Bible that you can read and believe that these are the words of God? It's, it's incredible, man. It's just incredible. It's just incredible. So I think I got the wrong one here. Uh oh, I can't remember nothing. Way off. Look at that, it's so far off. Isaiah 34. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Why would God say that if there wasn't a book of the Lord? Now, you, you know that uh, Moses went up to the mountain and God gave him tables of. of uh, of, uh, how, how do how do you say that? Oh, I better learn how to spell it before I say it. So in Exodus 24, come up to the mountain, be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and the commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach us, or thou mayest teach them. All right. So God gave Moses personally directly the word of God it was given to Moses directly to Moses so also today we have the word of God directly coming from God All right. so the issue is faith do you believe the word of God that's that's the key that's the key to understanding and it's always been about faith it's always been about faith always been always been about faith and that's the key to understanding without faith there is no understanding without faith your eyes are closed so the key is believing the Bible that you hold in your hands once you have faith then you ought to be able to see it's very simple 
all these things are happening and if you're looking for evidence that we're really close to the end of the world the evidence is all the deception that we see in the world that's how we know we're getting really close man we're getting really really close very very close okay so uh, I appreciate that request hopefully that answers your request and your question it's very simple now look I know people want to take advantage of those that don't read the Bible very much or that they you know they're people are busy in their own lives or there are even people that are new believers and there's deceivers out there waiting lying in wait waiting to deceive those new believers or those that are so uh, in you know caught up in their life and the things of this world out of because of their families and in that and their jobs and that sort of thing I get it it's hard at the end of the day it comes down to do you believe what the Bible says or are you gonna trust what God or I'm sorry are you gonna are you gonna trust what men say that God says right that's really what it comes down to and we can't trust man you know this has been evidenced really all through our life we can't trust what other men say and so there's the challenge almost the almost the the test now God is not testing us but if we don't believe what the Word of God says then we're gonna be handed over to delusions uh, all to all these false teachings and uh, again I, I can't say it enough I can't express it enough believe the Bible that you hold in your hands believe it is from God because it is it's directly from God just as Moses received the Word of God directly from God so also do we have the Word of God directly from God man cannot live on bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live all right it's so if that's the case then where can I find the Word of God where can I find every word of God and of course in the English it's the King James Bible all right all right so that's it thanks thanks again Gabriel SYT I appreciate the comment uh, let me know if I if I answered or helped in any way I appreciate it